Hey guys, my name is Leslie Jones and today we're going to be creating one of the most epic, what are they called? One of the most epic kaiju, kaiju? I'm not familiar with that word. Of all time, Godzilla. Like a baby Godzilla. Like a baby cartoon Godzilla. I wanted to make a huge one, uh, but it's too big. I don't have that much space. So I made a baby one. I am extremely pleased with how this cake turned out. He looks fierce and cute and also fat. I love fat monsters. They're my favorite. So let's get started. Now make sure you hit that like button because it really helps me out and it lets me know that you like what I'm producing. Let's create this cake. I'm using my PVC pipe system and I've got a whole bunch of cake. I'm adding some buttercream onto my cake stand as glue and just adding on my first layer of cake. Now this is an egg cake. I'm using an egg cake because I thought it would help with the back of Godzilla because he has a tail. And then I just started stacking some, actually they're different size cakes. I think one is seven, one is six, and the next one is five. I knew that Godzilla's body was gonna like taper at the top. So I didn't make the cakes the same size so that I wouldn't have that much extra cake. Although I did still have a lot of extra cake. Then I started to carve. The thing that I found the most difficult about this cake was I didn't have a reference picture. I kind of had an idea of what I wanted, but because this wasn't an exact replica of Godzilla, I kind of just made it up as I was, as I was going along. Which you shouldn't do because this could have been a disaster. But it didn't. Look at this. He looks like a chubby dinosaur. I'm gonna add buttercream onto the cake in swirls. Oh, I love adding buttercream like this, man. And I'm just gonna give this baby a crumb coat. Oh. I haven't used chocolate cake in a very long time. I wonder why I decided to use chocolate cake here. Actually, I could go for some chocolate cake right now. My cake scraps actually came in handy, which is great because I had a lot. I used all of my cake scraps to create Godzilla's legs. Gluing it on with some buttercream, hoping that it'll stay, and it did. I'm just gonna have to round out all of these shapes very, very carefully because this is not stable at all. <laughs> I'm giving this another coat of buttercream. Now, while this cake was in the fridge, I was watching this show on Hulu called Step by Step. Step by Step, day by day. I watched the first episode and I realized that I don't remember anybody's face from that show. I remember three characters. I remember Suzanne Summers. I remember the husband's face and I remember the kid with the glasses because he was in Beethoven. But all of the other characters, they look so generic. <laughs> I was trying to remember why I used to watch that show. I don't remember why. It was like Family Matters, but not as good. I'm curious, how did you feel about that show when you were growing up? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know in the comments below. Now let's get back to the cake. I'm placing on my first layer of fondant. It's gray fondant. Do I have this color? Kind of like a liquid mercury, which is cool because mercury is one of my favorite X-Men. So because this is such a strange shape, I decided to wrap each side separately. So I'm wrapping the left side first, just making sure I cover the entire left side of the tail as well as the left side of the body. Then I just cut away the excess because I'm gonna cover the face separately. Now I was scared that the fondant was going to crust before I could add detail. So I'm adding detail to this layer of fondant before I add on the next. I'm just scoring it with some fondant tools and just adding scale detail to the back as well as his legs. Then I covered the other side of the cake. Now I tried as much as possible to replicate the details that I placed on the other side of the cake. Then I added some fondant to the front to create Godzilla's face. And I made sure that the fondant that I was wrapping Godzilla with had one seam that was like along all of the plates on his back. When I was adding texture to his mouth, it actually just looked like an old man's mouth. You know, like old men who don't have teeth? That's kind of what Godzilla's mouth looks like. I was really nervous about all the details creating for his face because I wasn't sure if it was going to look cartoony or scary or what the balance was gonna be like because I couldn't imagine it. Yeah, I should have drawn this out so I knew like this is what's gonna look like, 
you need these details here but I was kind of just like is this gonna look nice probably let's hope cross your fingers now I covered his belly with a lighter piece of fondant and started to add the same detail that was underneath it and then I covered the seam I'm just gonna blend this into the existing fondant with some fondant tools Oh, look how cute these itty bitty hands are. They're just hugging up on that belly. <laughs> you just have a really big belly and remember that. You just rest your like lace potato chips and then you rest your hands next to it and you watch The Simpsons. That was life. <laughs> Godzilla has these enormous plates on his back, kind of like a stegosaurus. And I thought that making a cartoonish version of them would mean that these would be easier, but no. Because even though they were a little bit more cartoonish, there were still so many of them. And I had to make sure that they had the same proportions as the Godzilla in the movie. So they start out small, like right at the top of his neck, and they start to get bigger by his back. And then they get a little bit smaller and smaller and smaller as they go down his tail. Took a lot of time, but it was worth it because this looks fierce. Once I added all of the plates, I added on three toes. Three itty bitty toes. He's so fat he can't see his feet. And then I started to add some white fondant to give him his eyes. They fit so well. I did a good job with that. I didn't have any problems when I was putting them in. It took so much time to add all the texture to the fondant. So now the cake is back to like room temperature I think. Which meant that I had to be a lot more careful with my movements because otherwise they would just shift underneath the fondant. Once I added the eyes, it was time to start painting this baby with some food coloring and magic sauce. For the most part, I just highlighted the white in his eyes with a little bit of yellow and orange. And then I highlighted his scales. I wanted to make sure that they looked as real and cartoonish as possible. And then I just dirtied him up. He's always dirty. He's always in like war-torn areas, covered in debris and ash and fire. And my favorite part of Godzilla were when the plates on his back lit up with that blue glow and then he shot that like blue fire at the monster. Ooh, that was cool. So I painted each of the scales with a little bit of baby blue, white food coloring and some magic sauce. And I added some blue to his mouth too. As soon as he opens it up, yo, you're burned to ash. I wanted to make sure I added a little bit more detail to like his hands and his feet. So I painted them with a little bit of black food coloring. Cause he's feeling a little emo-ish, you know? He's listening to The Reason by Hoobastank and, and whatever else that emo kids listen to. And voila, my Godzilla cake was complete. Proud of this cake I am. The detail on each of the plates is phenomenal. Love the chest plate that I created. And I love the way that I made his eyes glow. Good job, pump yourself on the back. Good job to you, boy. Good boy, good boy. Now I figured that I was never gonna create another Godzilla cake. <laughs> so I decided to repaint this one and make him look more evil. First, I started off by adding a little bit of yellow to the plates as well as his mouth. And I decided that that wasn't cool enough. So I'm adding red. And I decided to actually add the red everywhere on his body. I wanted it to look like red lava and fire was just gonna burst out of his mouth and of his everywhere. I wanted this to be a lot darker take on Godzilla because there's so many different versions in the Japanese version of Godzilla. And I was even debating on whether or not I should just paint him gold because there's a gold Godzilla. But I overuse luster dust all the time, so let's do something different. I love it, man. And that red eye, man, the way it glows looks so bomb. Now I'm curious, which one of my Godzilla cakes do you like? Do you like the original one or do you like this one? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I will see you very soon. Peace!